Okay, well, no one said no to the idea last video, so we are rewriting the rules and list of characters for this account. Now, I've thought about this a lot, and I think I found a way to make it as simple as possible. Obviously, a support is a very subjective title still, so it's going to still be a little bit interesting, but I have found a way to make it as simple as I can, I think. So, after going through and reading every single character's talents, all of these, it was a pain. I now have a new list of characters I consider supports, and this should be a little bit easier to understand than the last characters, which sort of didn't really have a whole lot of meaning behind the characters I consider supports. Now, before I go through those characters, the rules that I have changed to are very, very simple. Basically, the character needs to have a supportive ability at C0 level 1 with no talents or artifacts. So the only place they can get their supportive ability from is their skill and their burst. I guess also normal attack, but there's no abilities in normal attacks. But that basically just removes all of those characters that have, like Shangling, that has an attack increase in her passive, or Rosaria who has a little crit increase in her passive. It also removes any of the DPSs that could be confused as supports because characters like Hu Tao increases crit rate very similar to Rosaria. However, I don't think anyone would call Hu Tao a support. So by doing this at level 1, it removes any of the characters like that. Now, for what counts as a supportive ability, I'm going to go back to my first video that I made in this account, which I actually summed it up very well, and if I just read through everyone's talents then and stuck to that, it would have been way easier. But very very simple the character needs to either shield that is like an actual shield not damage reduction like dia then there is characters that heal pretty simple then we have characters that buff now this does need to be a substantial sort of thing it can't be someone like candace her and ayato are the only two that kind of do this but in her burst characters deal increased elemental damage with their normal attacks now that is basically saying if you're using candace's burst you do more damage. And that isn't really buffing the whole team. I'm talking about a team-wide or, you know, active character attack buff, elemental damage buff, or just damage buff in general. Candice's little one, or Ayato also has one as well. Those both don't count, as I sort of only work to increase the damage of that character's specific burst or skill. Now, the last category, which only has two characters in it, is batteries. Now there are only two characters that fit into this category. One is Raiden Shogun and the second one is Electro Looming. Both of them have a talent that increases energy recharge for party members. The Raiden Shogun's is on her burst and the Traveler's I think is just through her whole kit just increases the energy recharge. And to be considered a battery they need to have that energy recharge in their skills. So characters like Fischl who people do use as a battery she doesn't actually say anywhere in her skill or burst that she increases the energy recharge. So she's not a support. Raiden, on the other hand, does increase the energy recharge in her burst and skill. Plus she also has burst damage increase. So she is a support. So those are basically the, the basic categories. Shielders, healers, buffers, and batteries. Without further ado, we'll go into the characters I consider supports. And I'll do a brief explanation of why I consider them a support, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. So first up we have Barbara, she obviously heals in both her skill and her burst. Next up we have Bennett, who heals in his burst and also increases the attack in his burst. Xing Cho, who was previously considered support, is not because he only increases the interruption resistance, I'm pretty sure, which for me isn't big enough of a supportive ability. I'll actually mention that now, the, the categories I don't consider as supports are characters that group enemies, so Venti groups enemies has no other supportive ability. Sucrose groups enemies no other supportive ability except for one of her passives that has like a tiny little elemental mastery buff and I think similar applies with Venti. But again we're not going off passive talents. Also characters that either have interruption resistance or damage reduction like Dia. They need to actually stop the damage from being taken in the first place. So next character is Noelle, also pretty self-explanatory, she shields. Next we have Jean, also pretty self-explanatory, she heals in her burst. Next up is Chi Chi, she is full healing, so skill and burst both heal. 
Mona is the next one that we are counting. She has damage increase in her burst. Next up, we have Diona. She shields in her skill and heals in her burst. Shen Yen, who I know there were a couple people saying that she was originally intended to be a DPS. That being said, she still applies a shield like any other shielder. So we are still counting her. Next, we have Zhongli. He shields. He's one of the best shields in the game. He also shreds resistances, which isn't as big of a thing, but the main thing for him is he shields. It's an extra little thing. I've got down on my little notes here every single kind of supportive ability that character can do. Next up's a bit of a weird one, which is Kazuha, because it doesn't directly say anywhere in his skill or burst that it buffs damage. So it's kind of weird because it doesn't really sit with the rules I set. However, I don't think there's a single person who plays Kazuha as a DPS or a sub DPS. He's sort of solely designed as a support. I'm going to get back to him. We'll talk about him a little bit later because there is another character that fits in the same category as him. But I will come back to these guys. We'll talk a bit more about them at the end. We're just going to go through all the characters that I am 100% considering supports. And we'll get back to these other ones later. Next up, we have Sayu. She heals. That's about all she does, really. Uh, Kujo Sara is the next one. She, I think, from the notes that I very badly wrote down here, she increases the attack for the active character. Next up, we have Raiden Shogun. She increases the ER of characters, so actually getting their burst up quicker, being a proper battery. Plus, she also has burst damage increase, which isn't as big of a thing. If they only had burst damage increase, I wouldn't have counted her. But because she fits into the role of a battery with the energy recharge, the burst damage is a little bit of extra goodness from her. Plus, she's also C1, and there's no way I wouldn't use her. I'd find some way to be able to use her. Next, we have Kokomi. Again, very, very simple. Heals in both her burst and her skill. Next up is Toma, who has to have one of the worst written talent stuff in the world. Because he is a shielder. That's his role. However, when you read through this, it doesn't say he applies a shield anywhere. It just says he applies a defensive blazing barrier, which is a shield, and they could have just said that. But they don't anywhere. However, it still does everything a shield should do. Made me have to go actually fully test him out to make sure that's how it works. But he it does he does apply a shield and he is a shielder. That's what he does. Even though it doesn't sound like it when the way you read through his talents. It sounds like he's kind of like a deer. He just kind of reduces the damage taken. But no, he actually does shield. He stops you from taking damage. Next up, we have Goro. Another one that's pretty simple. He buffs defense and geo damage. He's your go-to Geo DPS support, or support for a Geo DPS. Next up, you have Yunjin. She shields kind of not really. It's only when she's using her elemental skill, which I'm not really counting as shielding, because then we could also count characters like Beidou, because she also shields while using her skill. The main reason why we're counting Yunjin is because she increases normal attack damage. Again, she's one of those characters that is your go-to support for a normal attacking DPS. We have Shenha, again, pretty self-explanatory buffer. She increases the damage and shreds cryo resistance, I think, or all resistances. She shreds cryo and physical resistances. Plus, she increases the damage you do. Next up, we have Cookie. She heals. Very, very simple. Dory. She heals. She also actually is a battery as well. I forgot that. But she is also a battery because she increases the energy recharge as well of your characters. As well as also healing. She dual wields supportive abilities of both being a battery and a healer. However, that is definitely not how I'm going to be playing her because I'm going to be using her as a DPS. 100%. Because why not, I guess. Next up on our list, we have... Nahida, who's the other character that I'm going to talk about a bit later, because again, she doesn't say anywhere in her burst or her skill that she increases damage or does any sort of supportive ability, but similar to Kazuha, she's your go-to support for Dendro teams, but she doesn't actually say that anywhere in her talents. So again, we'll talk about her a bit later. Same with Kazuha. We'll go over them a little bit more later and I'll tell you what I think about them. Then we have Layla who's also 
pretty easy. She shields. She actually has a really, really good shield. I'd say it's almost, almost better than Zhongli's. I only say that because she's built with like 50 something thousand HP in my main account, maybe even more. She has an absolute absurd amount and nothing gets through her shield. So she's one of my favorite shielders in the game. Then we have Farazan. She buffs animal damage and also shreds animal resistance. Next we have Yao Yao. Everything about Yao Yao's kit is just healing. Her skill heals, her burst summons more Yugoi so you can heal more. It's all healing. Everything about her talents are healing. Now we move on to Mika. He will probably never be used to be fair, but he increases attack speed and I think physical damage, but that's in one of his passives, and heals. Attack speed is not the big one there. Healing is the big supportive ability from Mika. Moving along, we have Baiju. He heals in his burst and skill, and he shields with a very weird kind of shield in his burst. Then we have Kirara, who's probably one of my other favorite shielders. Obviously, she is a shielder. Then as we move up here, we skip a lot of the first Fontaine characters, and we go to Charlotte, who heals... And then during her passives, which again, we're not counting, but I'm just going to mention this because why not? She also does cryo damage or damage bonus increase and stuff as well. Farina, probably one of my favorite supports in the game. You know, she, she does a lot of good stuff. She heals with her skill, also does some really good damage with her skill. And her burst increases damage. Also increases incoming healing bonus, which I guess is nice if I'm using her with like Sijuin. We get a little bit more healing, but... Not the biggest thing. Her damage bonus is absolutely insane. And that's why Farina's up there for one of my favorite supports. In terms of best supports, she gets pretty close. I think Shalonan's also pretty close to that. And Kazuha as well. Next we have Chevrus, who's healing in her skill. They, they like mention it in like one sentence, but she does heal and I'm pretty sure she can heal decently as long as she's well built because that healing scales off her max HP. So as long as you build her with a decent amount of max HP, she can be pretty decent. She's also good for overload teams, but we don't really build overload teams this account. Next we have Xian Yun, who I really want to get because she makes some fun teams. But she heals in her burst. Next up we have Sijuin. She heals. She does actually really good healing in that as well. That's about all she does. And I have mine built as both a DPS and healer. She has enough HP to heal very well while also doing like 20k per hit in her burst. She's just fun to use. Then lastly for the characters you can get via the gotcha system, we have Shalonen, who I just got my main account just before the banner ended. Shalonen is actually a very fun support. She heals in her burst and she shreds resistances and everything in her skill, which is one of the longest and most confusing and annoying to read skills you'll ever see. Then finally, the only characters we have left are the versions of the Traveler, who I need to swap to because Geo Traveler is not a support. The Travelers that are a support are Electro, who is a battery. Then the second one is going to be a little bit dependent because the second one is Dendro. And it is somewhat similar to Nahida in the sense that there isn't really a supportive ability in her burst and skill. However, she increases EM, very similar to Nahida, in her passives. So I figured if we're going to count Nahida, we might as well count the Traveler because they play very, very similar roles. As they tend to do, the Traveler tends to sort of do a very similar thing to the Archons. But those are the characters I consider supports. I will throw up a list of them. Probably both in the comments of this video, I'll pin the comment. And I'll also put it up on my community tab because easy to find there but i feel like this list of supports and the rules we've chosen should make this a little bit easier now we go back to these characters nahida and kazua now i think i'm going to make an exception for these two only because they are the only two characters that are mainly played as a support that don't have the supportive ability in their burst or skill most use out of nahida's talents is this one, it comes from this talent here, this passive talent, increasing EM. That's like the whole reason you build Nahida is to increase EM for your Hyper Bloom character. And Kazuha, who increases damage with his burst. That's the whole reason you build Kazuha is to swell an element with his burst and then it increase the damage. Which is why I am going to make an exception for these two 
if any other character comes out like these guys at some point in the future, I will read through their talents and I'll see if they are solely played as a support like these two. I will think about that then. Hello, it is future me. I'm currently on Fontaine only, so disregard this team. But I need to reiterate something because while I was editing it, I realized that I didn't say what I meant clear enough. Basically, Nahida and Kazuha, we're counting them as supports. That's not changing. Those two are counted as supports because I spent so much time and energy getting them and then building them. So I'm not going to not use them. But if we're going off the rules, they are not counted as supports and I'm sticking to that. They're only counted as supports as an exception. So we're not getting any confusing thing with, but this other character has a supportive talent in that passive. And then we go back to all of the pain and suffering that we dealt with before and the confusion. These two are exceptions and they're going to stay that way. So any other characters that have a supportive ability in that passive, not counted. I've read through everyone's talents and the characters that I have said, those are the list of usable support characters. And there is not much that is going to be able to change my mind on any of that. The rules are pretty clear and all the characters I have chosen sits in those rules. And Nahida and Kazuha are exceptions. If I didn't have them, I might reconsider. But as I said, I've spent so much time and energy just trying to get them. So they are counted. But yeah, just reiterating that, the list of supports is pretty set in stone. Because I feel like that's the only way we can do this without confusion is if I just kind of set it in stone and not make it a bit all over the shop and I'll take recommendations for anything. If I just kind of just set it in stone and we stick to that. So yeah, I'll send you back to pass me to finish this video off. So that's going to be fun to edit because I just realized I've been yapping for 40 minutes straight. I'll put the characters in the pinned comment and also in my community tab. Those are the characters, those are the rules. Hopefully that simplifies things a little bit. I've read through every character's talents in the game, so I have a pretty solid understanding of how literally every character in the game works. Obviously not their passive talents, but their skill and burst. And I feel like this is the best list I can come up with. Obviously, supports are, an, are a very subjective title. However, I think this is the best way I can do it to try to simplify things and make it pretty straightforward. But before this video turns into like an hour long and it's going to be the worst thing in the world to edit, I think I'm going to leave it there. These yapping videos aren't the most enjoyable to watch, but I need to get them done and I don't have anything else to record so it works. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and hopefully we cleared some things up and made it a little bit more simpler. If you like sort of content, do consider subscribing. We are very, very close. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and good. Bye. Thank you.